I want to briefly mention that because this is the last video of the year on this channel, there will be a speech regarding this year in general at the end of it. This year has played a host to many events in which I didn't really know what I was doing with my life. So you know, I think that would be a great way to end off the year. Because I honestly don't know what I'm doing with my life right now. Because I've decided to that if you remember a few months ago, I did a video where I upgraded Windows 2000 to Windows 7 on a 20 year old computer. While I'm not sure if it can run Windows 10, it probably can't, but I might be getting it confused with a socket 370 PC that I have, it could potentially run other modern operating systems. No, I am not talking about Linux. And I'm not talking about Nanami OS either, either obviously. Like, I haven't even shown that in, on this channel in several months, but I have been working on it. No, because this time we're taking a look at something that I last mentioned interest in doing in a video that has been one of my least viewed videos of this year. We're going to try installing Haiku on a computer and see how it runs. And it's a, not just any computer, a computer from 20 years ago. Because a bit back, I was watching Action Retro, who is quite enthusiastic about this operating system, and I saw something saying that you can run this or on as early as a Pentium 2. As much as I would like to do that, and while yes, I have a Pentium 2, it's not necessarily in the greatest condition, and I don't have a hard drive for it. Not to mention, it's still very dusty. <coughs> so, I guess let's just settle for this PC, because it's something that doesn't have anything of a lot of value. So, to just briefly run over the specs, this thing has an Intel Celeron Northwood 128, 2.6 GHz, 512 MB of RAM. I'm not sure what the hard drive size is. I think it's around either 80 GB or 150 GB, but I I don't know. It has a DVD drive which uh, was installed in the last time that this computer was featured in a interesting experiment on this channel, and it was made by Gateway. So I guess let's go pop in the DVD, and frequency out of range. I should mention here, it didn't even show the boot screen. Not to mention, the keyboard was working just fine. Well... This is a bit of an awkward situation, because I was not expecting things to go wrong here. Because, uh, my name is not Michael, and things don't very often go wrong on this channel. I find it kind of funny that things went wrong this time because of the fact that things went wrong last time. But, anyway, allow me to present to you, objectively, an utter sin of a setup on this channel. I mean, I do use a computer card as my f recording setup, which may be changing in the future, but two monitors in around the same spot, and I had to use this on the floor. This time it showed the boot screen, but then it crashed. Or, it didn't show me any... It gave me the out of range error again. Well, now, let's figure out... Actually, it's not too difficult. I just went into the bootloader and opted to use a failsafe graphics driver and not the default one. And it works. So, let's get going on this installation. Just for some reference, the previous thing involving Windows 2000 being upgraded to Windows 7, that took like three days to record the video, or at least two.
Now with one installation later, let's go start this up for the first time and oh. Yeah, I need to put a setting in the boot so that it uses the failsafe driver. Otherwise, this happens. Uh. Anyway, here it is. Haiku. Now I should mention here, we do not have sound or internet. Because this thing probably would... I think it probably would be able to handle networking just fine. If only I had a way to connect this to the internet. I'm unsure if my Wi-Fi USB would work, and I don't have a way to plug this into Ethernet. So, uh, yeah. I think it should probably be pretty clear by my content that I don't have a way to access the internet using Ethernet. So, if I didn't already make it clear on why I'll, I don't show the internet a lot of my videos, that is probably why. This also means that we don't have a lot of applications and stuff that we can generally put to the test. I mean, we already could try some applications and put those to the test because, as I mentioned, this is a modern OS on a 20-year-old computer. So, of course, a lot of stuff is going to probably be a bit resource-intensive. First of all, I want to change the appearance a little bit to make this look a bit cooler. We'll change the desktop background a little bit later. Also, I'm not sure why, but I thought that there was a way to, like, group windows together and, like, have, like, tabbed windows or something, but I'm not sure if I'm remembering things correctly. We also have an activity monitor, which will be shown in the bottom left corner for the majority of this video so you can get an idea of how well this system is performing. Just for the record, it usually has around 25% of CPU in use. And now, let's get into some applications. First of all, there's this contact manager kind of thing similar to Windows contacts in like Windows Vista and 7. There is an image viewer, and I am also going to take the time to set a new desktop background right now. We have a built-in web browser called Web Positive. This will not be used here because, well, as I mentioned, we don't really have any network connection because this thing is not connected to the internet. If we look at the demos, there's this playground thing. We also have the GL Teapot demo, which is a teapot in OpenGL, which, let me tell you this, this demo really put this computer to the test. And in fact, it struggled a tinge when trying to run this demo. We also have Widgets of Sorts, a game called Pairs. Sudoku, whatever this thing is that I'm not going to mess around with, a tiny clock, a chart demo thingy, alongside a text editor, and last but not least, we have a drawing program of sorts. Which the PC can run, but I don't think it's very fond of it. And that's generally going to be about it. Overall, I think that you could somehow run a modern operating system on a 20-year-old computer just fine for the most part, except for the fact that some resource-intensive activities such as 3D stuff and drawing and presumably web browsing might be a bit stressful on the computer. Now, normally, that is where the video would end. However, if you can recall back to the first seconds of the video, and you're still watching, then you would probably know that I mentioned that this is the last video of the year. Because this video goes out on the 30th of December, 2024, which is basically the last video that I'm going to upload this year. I normally don't end videos like this, but as I mentioned, this video is a bit different from normal. And I did this last year, with my last video of Try Try 3. I also did not come up with this ahead of time, so, uh, yeah. Overall, 2024 was, well, the best year I have experienced in terms of YouTube stuff yet. I gained a six-digit number of views this year. I started this year out with not even 500 subscribers, and now I have around 1,500, potentially 1,600 when you see this video. I don't think so, but 
you never know. This year, my content has evolved drastically over the span of the year, since if you look at the stuff that I start out with in like January, it looks nothing like what you see right now. Over the year, my channel grew gradually, though at a faster rate compared to previous years. And just for the record, I was only expecting to get slightly better results for the entire year based off of my 2023 results which for the record was around 40,000 views and close to 300 subscribers gained. Two new videos got close to reaching 10,000 views and this all happened in a year that a lot of stuff happened. A lot of people had allegations thrown at them and there were a lot of conflicts among other things. Not only have I seen success this year but this year has also brought the rise of a competing channel which shows that I have some proper competition to some degree. This has overall been one of the best years I have had yet and if you have made it this far into the video thank you. Thank you all. I will try to continue to deliver on my content in Try Try 5, which I'm going to need to get work on content for immediately. I should also mention that, as a person, I have evolved quite a bit over the span of the year. As I now ha know how to uh, do things like cook a few more dishes, I've experienced old games, I've experienced older operating systems in easier ways, and I did this all in a year. So, once again, Thank you all. 2024 was amazing. Here's to an even better 2025. And to close out this year, Happy New Year.